Hey folks, this is a very <clears throat> quick tutorial on the um, KA50. I haven't flown the KA50 a huge amount lately, and I was having to reacquaint myself with the navigation system, so I thought I'd actually make a wee tutorial in case I forget how to do this again and have to watch this and learn it again. Anyway, let's have a quick look at what makes up the nav system on the um, KA50. The first part I'm going to show you here. This is the PVI 800. This uh, controls the waypoints that are stored in the onboard navigational computer. Uh, when you look on the HUD, you have your little carrot here of where you're facing. And over here is where the current waypoint you've selected is in relation to that. So I'd have to turn left to make these two match up. And that way there would be flying on course. So here's our uh, little control unit. Uh, most commonly, um, I'm not going to go through all the features, but uh, if you click waypoint and it lights up, you can barely see it light up, and you type a waypoint number, that allows you to cycle through the waypoints. So currently on the route I've got, I've programmed in four waypoints, and this tutorial is going to show you how to actually clear the waypoints I've put in and enter new ones, so you can then um, plot a course and then get the onboard navigation system to follow it for you in autopilot, which is kind of neat. The other part of the system is this here. This is the Abris. This is your like moving map system. Now this button here is the like uh, the mode toggle. Uh, the five buttons here correspond to numbers one, two, three, four, and five on the top row of your keyboard. So, like I said, this is not going to be in depth. It's just going to be a quick overview and show you how to set up your um, your waypoints. So if we click on Nav, we zoom in there. There is a um, very small course plotted. It's basically four waypoints. If I go to map button and then the plus, you can see I can zoom in there to show you it's basically a box. I'll zoom back out again. So this, this button here will toggle the different modes and different views on the screen. The Abris itself and the PVI are not linked. That's very important to realize. This one here takes GPS information and then works out where you are and then puts your little marker on the map and draws a little trail behind you wherever you happen to have been. So like I say, important to note that these two things aren't linked. So that's the sort of basics of what the nav system does and how it operates. Uh, the other thing is that when you actually want to let the autopilot take over, you engage the route mode which is on your um, collective here. So now that we switch in the forward position, the nav system is controlled by the PVI 800 here. We'll take over and fly the aircraft for you. The only other thing you might want to do is press this other button here, which is your uh, altitude hold. So it'll keep it a, keep the helicopter at a constant altitude and fly around the waypoints. So uh, that's the basic rough overview of how the system works. And we'll start off with the next point in a second or two. Okay, let's go through the first basic steps. What we're going to do first is we're going to clear the current routes that are on the Abris, and we're going to set up the. Um, there's a little setting here we need to tweak on the Abris so as we can enter data. The Abris works in. Um, degree notation and the PVI 800 works in decimal so we need to change it to make sure we're entering the right coordinates. So first off cycle round here we are here's our plan we go click the option button click setup and then we use our wee scroll wheel here you can use just move your mouse pointer over it and then scroll your mouse wheel if you scroll it forward, that's clockwise, and scroll it back, it's anti-clockwise. We go down to units, press, this is right click. There we go. So we're currently set, latitude and longitude is both set in um, degree notation. We we'll just click change, and that moves to the decimal point. Move down to the next line, change again, and that's it set. And then click the menu button to come back out again. That's the first thing done, so that they both are using the uh, decimal system. Next we go to the plan. So this is our current flight plan that's programmed into the computer and we're just gonna clear this. So we'll click select, and scroll down to unload. 
and right click and that basically blanks it so that's the, the, the sort of two basic first steps to do so that basically clears uh, what's in the abris and it gives us the ability now to start entering stuff okay so we've cleared the flight plan now we actually want to create one so when we're creating a flight plan all it basically does is creates the waypoints inside the abris system itself and puts little marks on the map so we'll just click draw and you see we green cursors now appeared on the map i can move it about so if i scrolling uh clockwise it's going up counterclockwise it's going down if i press the button with the right click and that allows us to move it left and right so i'm just going to put a waypoint directly to the north of our current position and then go click add it's automatically put in a number so that's waypoint one i'll just hit enter again and that's the first waypoint down zero zero one click edit now uh, it automatically is uh, set to insert if i wanted to edit one i could just scroll down to edit but we're going to insert because we're going to create a new one now right click i move this one over here and see where it's drawing a wee line that's basically our course line and just click add and that's number two enter edit again right click on that and i'll just draw it down how yeah, about there i'll do add point three enter edit again insert draw this over here add waypoint four enter edit again insert this time we'll go north and it's just basically made us a little box so there we go there's our actual flight plan set up now all we've basically done is mark these locations into the Abris system and um, go to plan, set it to active, if we go to FPL, this shows you the actual list of all those coordinates that we've just created. That's the first step done. We've actually got the data that we need. The uh, latitude and longitude coordinates are now all listed in this flight plan and stored in the Abris. So we now have to get it into the PVI 800. And that's the next step. Okay, now let's get the coordinates into the PVI 800. And let's see if I can get this all on the screen at once. All right, first thing, go down to this knob and turn it around to edit. And let's left click once. That puts us into edit mode to actually start entering stuff. I'll just pause my track AR. Right, so we're going to enter each of these coordinates. Um, because we are north of the equator and east of the um, Greenwich median line, our coordinates are going to be positive. This may be different if you're in like uh, Nevada, for example. You may have to use the negative. So we'll click waypoint, type the number in, and this shows our current coordinate. And now we're going to enter our new one. So it's plus because it's uh, to the right. So two, four, two, eight, eight. And then again, just because it's another plus coordinate, zero, five, four, two, seven, nine. then hit enter and that's just programmed in that first waypoint in uh, coordinate waypoint one in the pvi just click on two and then enter the next line enter basically finalizes if you cock one of these up you can hit reset to go back and re-enter it three
four. Notice I'm rounding some of these up. Uh, finally got waypoint five. Now I'll notice that there's uh, we're actually skipping out one of the digits at the end. That's just because it doesn't have that level of precision. No, it's not honestly necessary. So once we're finished entering those, flick this round back to the OPR, which is operate mode. And that's the uh, second step done. We've now got the coordinates that were programmed into the ABRIS, and they're now programmed in the PVI, so we can actually follow the course. Right, we have the information in Abris, we now have it in the PVI, but there's one final step we need to do. So we need to make sure that the switch here, where DH is forward, and what we're going to do now, the one final piece of information we need to do is, we need to tell the system what way and what order we want the waypoints to go in. And ironically enough, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's the order we want them to, to go in. And that means it'll go to waypoint one, two, three, four, and five. And if you want that, if this was a like a route across the country or something, you could actually go and invert them and go five, four, three, two, one. That would take you back to where you started. So to set up the order, we go the waypoint button, type in one, and then enter, and two, enter, three, enter, four, enter, five, enter. And what that's done now is it's told the PVI that once I reach waypoint one and then they go to waypoint two, so it'll automatically when the nav system works out that it's got the waypoint one, it'll set waypoint two active and then your helicopter will change course to waypoint two and I'll follow through all the rest of them up until waypoint five. And that is the basics of how you actually get waypoint set up into the nav computer and actually get it to do something so I'll take off now and let's have a wee flight so currently we're they're currently active uh, waypoint is number one on the Abris this little uh, time counter is going crazy because we're not actually moving yet so let's take off and head toward waypoint one so we're setting waypoint one Remember these aren't linked, so I've set waypoint one here and waypoint one here. Let's take off. Okay, I got interrupted by a phone call there, so I gotta take off again. Okay, so the course has been set in the Abris, it's been punched into the PVI, and the waypoint order's also been set in the PVI. Let's take off and see if this thing will fly the route. Okay, wait, we're on waypoint one. Try and trim her out a wee bit here. Okay, that's recently trimmed. Now just activate root mode. Let the computer take over. And activate altitude hold. And I will set the altitude hold to barometric actually. Be sure to be cheer. Right, so we're flying on the course, we're on the first leg to waypoint one.
So if we zoom in on our little Abris screen, okay, we're 30 seconds or thereabout out from the uh, waypoint. Okay, so if we look down, we'll see that the PVIs automatically switch to waypoint 2. And now, so has the Abris. So the little green line, which is your course line of where you're flying to, is now pointing to waypoint 2 instead of waypoint 1. Now we'll just leave her and she'll uh, fly around this little square if I let her. So that's it. Uh, the reason why I did this is because it's been I haven't really played around with the nav systems in a couple, you know, probably a year or two years on this thing, and I was like, I'm not too sure I remember how to do this, so I had to go through and muddle through and work it out. So I uh, hope this helps, and uh, see you on the battlefield. Have fun, guys.